a key thing is the man of peace in starting new house churches or simple churches that can meet in houses, workplace, cafes, pubs, hairdressers, uh, wherever. And uh, in uh, Matthew 10, 11, Jesus says, whenever you enter a new town or village, search for a man of peace and stay in their home until you leave town. And in Luke 10, it says, uh, when you enter the house, give it your peace. And say the kingdom of heaven has arrived. Heal the sick that's in that house. Drive out demons in that house. Say, that, let the peace stand in the house and let the church start basically in the house where you disciple the people in that house. Jesus said, don't move from house to house, but stay in the same place until you leave town. And uh, so when people go out evangelizing in towns um, or cities or wherever, um, it's, not, it's important not only just to preach the gospel and heal people, but to be searching who is the person of peace amongst these people that we're reaching. So that you can not only uh, scatter seed, but also you can grow a new church in that harvest. So um, four things you can ask people when you heal them or when you preach the gospel to them or you share your story with them or you meet a need when you go out in cities. You can say to them, would you like to know more? Where can we meet you? So it's on their terms and their turf in their place. You can ask the third question is, who else do you know that might be interested? So that you can gather more of their friends and family and people. And then you can ask them, what time and date can we meet you? So do you want to know more? Where can we meet you? Who else do you know? And what time and date? And then, then you can gather a church in their place. Like, for example, when Peter met Cornelius, Peter was praying on the roof. Cornelius was praying. An angel came to him and said, go and, go and fetch Peter. Peter arrived at Cornelius' house in Acts 10. And all of the people were ready in the house, uh, like in this house now, ready for Peter to preach to them. And as, they, as Peter preached, the Holy Spirit came down and then he said, what's stopping all these people from being baptised now? So not only did Peter find the person of peace, Cornelius, but all of the household were baptised and filled with the Spirit. So then the church met in Cornelius' house. That also happened with Lydia in Acts 16. Uh, she said, if I'm a person of peace, come and stay at my house. And it says that Paul and Silas and Timothy went and stayed at Lydia's house. And then at the end of Acts 16, it said the church met in Lydia's house because all of her household were baptised. So we're looking for these key people of peace who are like the first workers in the harvest. They're the first domino. They come to Christ and their whole household comes to Christ. So if we do that, we stay with them and train them until they then start making disciples of others also. So I was saying that it's not only important to go to city centres, but to go to houses. Because when you knock on the door and you find the house, you can go back to that house and train them. But if you're only in city centre, you might see people, but then you don't see them again unless you go to the groups in the town. In each town, there's a pub where the same people are always in there or certain cafes where the same people always go there or the certain um, streets where you see gangs hanging out. If you go to those places repeatedly, you're more likely to get a church started. So we're looking for the person of peace and their oikos, their household, their circle of influence so that we win them and we win the whole group. Example is Acts 16, right? About midnight, and they're just obeying what Jesus told them to do in, in, in that regard, in terms of how Jesus said to, 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 to go about building churches and, and where to base themselves. Um, so about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. They were finding joy in really difficult circumstances, like we talked about in prison. Uh, and other prisoners were listening to them. I bet they were. So they were about those having church in prisons. Suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. Or at once the prison doors flew open and everybody's chains came loose. The jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors were open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. The Paul shouted, don't harm yourself, we're all here. So God's just freeing Paul from prison and, and Paul's in no rush. Well, God's just broke off chains, let's leg it. No, God, will deal. God, God can free me in 10 minutes. He come out, there's no rush. God's sovereign, yeah? Um, take your mask off. The yeah. jailer <laughs> called for lights, rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? There's your man of peace. Right. What does Paul do? Does he take him through the sinner's prayer? No, he doesn't take him through the sinner's prayer. Paul doesn't just want this guy's soul. He wants all of them yeah. because he's hungry. 
to make disciples. That's what his main desire is. He hasn't lost the fact that there's an opportunity here and an opening that the Lord has given him. Mm. There's an opening. We're looking for openings. Mm. We're looking for an opportunity to go and take the gospel into a new place mm. where it's not been before, to, to bring the kingdom of God into a place of darkness. Then he replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. <clears throat> yeah? Where can we go? Would you like to hear more? Where can we go? Who else would like to hear this teaching? That's how Paul's done it. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and all the others in his house, our servants and all the, you know, everybody. And at that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and his family were baptized. That quick. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had become to believe in God, he and his whole family. And you've got a church there. Yeah, so if you want to start a church that meets in your home, your workplace or your leisure place, you just need to start by first come to Jesus, repent, be baptised, filled with the Holy Spirit. Then gather all of your friends, your family together, begin, begin by bringing and sharing a meal. Then start to look at the Bible and do what it says. Uh, we can give more teaching on this. This is just a short thing. Uh, in Acts 2.42, they listened to the apostles' teaching, which was the Bible and doing what it says. They shared their meals with the Lord's Supper. So they shared food together, they prayed together, and they shared their lives together. Uh, that's just a simple thing. Uh, but we can share more with you uh, if you want later on. And we can come and help you in your area to start a house church. Because in different places, Jesus sent out traveling workers that travel from one place to another. So we can come and help you as you start. And then we can leave you doing it and return and see how you're getting on.